Well, the carnage continues in the women's draw on an interesting day four of competition here at the Australian Open, and we saw Ons Jabur, the latest casualty, to end her campaign here at the hands of a, a young lady who is really turning heads. Welcome Kate Burton to the AO Show for the first time. And this teenager, Mira Andreva, is really something. My goodness me, doesn't she make us feel old? 16 years old and one of the favourites, certainly with the crowd, Andre Burr crashing out of the Australian Open. But what a performance it was by the 16-year-old. I mean, we know her from last year because she won the girls' title. And now it's coming in and making a massive statement early on in the first week. And so some impressive stats from that match, certainly. Well, the scoreline, 6-love, six 6-2. Uh, it's a boil over, Simon, whichever way you look at it. Well, that's quite some progression, isn't it, from being junior champion 12 months ago to storming through a match like we saw um, from her today. So impressive probably doesn't do it justice. Um, and I think you set the tone for a match like that early. And set number one was a total domination. So 24 total points, 1-8. to eight. It was absolute one-way traffic. And the service game of Mira Andreva, completely dominant. 85% of points won in behind her first serve. Landed 81% of her first serves in that opening set. Complete one-way traffic. Um, impossible not to be incredibly impressed by that performance on Rod Laver Arena today. 85% to 42 first serves won. 59 to 23 return points won. And... This was her childhood idol that she was playing. Yes, to think that she grew up watching Onjaba. And what we all love about Ons is that she's the type of player, and she's also, most importantly, the type of person that opens up and that lets you into her life. And that's why we all are aching for her to do brilliantly and to pick up that first Grand Slam. You know, the, she was so upset when she didn't get across the line at Wimbledon thought she could come here but she has been battling that knee injury she hasn't come in playing much tennis and you've got to be match fit I mean that's the only challenge with this Grand Slam taking place in January it is the crown jewel of Australian tennis but it happens very quickly and so a lot of these players do come down early play in the United Cup in Brisbane in Adelaide and she didn't get the chance to do that and so coming in and taking on a player who has got nothing to lose the underdog not expected to win everybody wanted and expected Ons to get across the line but she couldn't and she was completely swept off the court. Well I think that's great insight because for me looking at Ons Jabeur play today it didn't look like the Ons Jabeur that we've that we've grown to know and grown to love and so I did have a question mark just in watching the match over her health over her fitness over her condition and so I think what what Kate highlights there in terms of an, an injury interrupted preparation for me absolutely is a factor in the match and getting back to the Andreva side of the equation she does it in a different way doesn't she in terms of return of serve so often in the women's game now we're seeing players on or in the case of someone like a Garcia or an Osaka well inside the baseline returning second serves and Draver's prepared to yield ground she's more than happy to go back in the court she wants to start that battle of attrition if you like to utilize her physicality to the fullest extent and and what a mover she is incredibly agile and lightning quick around the court so I love the fact that from a return of her perspective, she does it, does it in a different way to most of her peers. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see how she progresses because she's got nothing to lose. She's claimed a huge scalp already and uh, the world is bright. The world is very exciting for Mira, Mira Andreva. Let's see what happens in the next round. Yep, her first top 10 scalp in her career. Um, heaps more to be written in this wonderful story of what very much could be one of the brightest stars of the next decade or so in women's tennis. Turning our attention to day five, Kate, and we see a most fascinating battle between two very popular men around here, Grigor Dimitrov, the 13th seed, and Australian Thanasi Kokinakis. Yes, well, Dimitrov, I mean, let's face it, for the ladies, he's pretty easy on the eye, so <laughs> there's one good reason to watch him. His tennis isn't bad either. But, you know, Kokinakis, what an epic five-setter that was, hey, Simon. It was compelling viewing. And what was so good that he was acknowledging the crowd afterwards in his post-match interview that helped him get that victory. I loved what he said when he won. He goes, Look, I've got the attention span of a three-year-old so you know you guys got me across the winning line to seal that victory and uh, it's going to be a tall order for him to take down Dimitrov who's only won a couple of weeks ago uh, I believe that was in Brisbane yes. wasn't it and uh, the last time Dimitrov won in Brisbane he then went on to reach the semi-finals of the Australian Open his best result yeah so he's gone deep and uh, you know a player who has tasted a huge amount of success has a lot of experience but Kokonakis coming in 
to this championship, having the crowd on his side, let's hope, because uh, the Aussie fans, they love getting behind a player. I mean, this, the atmosphere, it's a bit different to Wimbledon, isn't it, this happy slam? <laughs> yeah, I think that's safe to say, Kate. And it wouldn't be an Australian Open on John Kane Arena without one of the special Ks yeah. leading a raucous atmosphere, a, a crazy environment over there on John Kane Arena last night. And Ultimately, Kokonakis is able to prevail in a really um, amazing, uh, entertaining clash. I wonder, I do wonder whether there's a physical toll to be paid for that. And we saw Dimitrov looking so sharp in Brisbane. He was electric with his movement, as aggressive as I can ever recall seeing him play. Um, so I think it's a recipe that, as you both highlight, has worked so well for Dimitrov in years gone by when he started his campaign so strongly down under. Uh, I think it's a formidable task for Thanasi tomorrow night, but but as Kate says, not an impossible one. Well, Dimitrov had a pretty brutal battle in tough conditions against Martin Fuchsovic in that first round, a four-setter. Who do you think stands up better in a, in a second round? Who recovers better from that? Thanasi in a five-set match later in the day or Dimitrov, an ageing Dimitrov, in the heat of the day? I think it's hard to tell. I mean, they were both jumped in the ice bath afterwards to recuperate and uh, you know, take any inflammation out of their body that they can to be ready. All of these players, anybody who is playing in a Grand Slam has got the movement, they've got their physical attributes to play at the very best. It's still early in the first week. Yeah, It's only going to be the second round match. So I don't think fitness will be a huge problem. I think if it was this time next week, it would be more of a conversation. But I do think that uh, Dimitrov will have more experience and I think he is going to be very difficult to beat. But Kokonakis, when you think about that epic match last year against Andy Murray, the disappointment he suffered when he was two sets to the good and then crashed out after Murray came fighting back and winning in five but I think he will learn from that experience and he'll want it so badly and maybe if he's going to play with his heart and he's going to put everything out there on the line you never know and that's the beauty of sport and that's why we're here and why we love this championship so much. Simon, who are you giving the edge to? Well, I think Kokonakis has got the weapons to certainly be competitive on serve and forehand, and, and he'll serve it up to Dimitrov. So I think the challenge for Grigor is can he maintain that aggressive style, the, the, the proactive approach we've seen from him so far in season 2024? I think he gets it done, but I think it goes four or five. And okay. Kate? I think Dimitrov, and I'm sitting with two Australians either side of me, okay? Don't beat me up. I think Dimitrov is going to win in four. Okay, thank you, Simon, Kate, and uh, come back tomorrow for more of the AO Show. To hear the episode in full, check the link in the description below to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, oh.